coming here today to celebrate James and Mimi's wedding. Now, it's hard for me to believe that it's been almost 37 years since my mom told me and my sister Helen that we might have a little brother or a little sister. Obviously, me and my sister started debating about whether it'd be better to have a little brother or a sister. I wanted a little brother, and my sister wanted a little sister. Obviously, in hindsight, we can both agree that I won that argument. <laughs> Now, from a very young, in, in our family, you know, like in many you know, Taiwanese families, we have a lot of nicknames and stuff. We have multiple, multiple nicknames. Now, one of my particular favorite nicknames that James had, that my mom gave him, is called Gong Tao, which literally translates to dumbhead. Now, obviously, you're thinking, huh? Why are you calling him Gong Tao? Is he some sort of idiot or not something? Obviously, that's not the reason. We call him Gong Tao because, you know, it's, we're kind of being contrary because James is actually very smart. But I still call him Gong Tao and he does respond to it. <laughs> From a very, very young age, it was very obvious that James was a very analytical baby because I remember when he was about one years old or so, me and Helen was trying to get him to walk. But obviously at that age, crawling was more efficient, so he refused to walk. So what we did was that we baited him with baby cookies. So James would stand up, walk, get the baby cookie, and then sit down. Refusing, you know, eating the cookie and refusing to move again until we baited him with another cookie. Now, the other thing about James is that not only is he very, you know, analytical, he also has that you know, type of Bugs Bunny type of smart. You know, like, like the mythical gods of mischief like Loki and Kayo. You know, James tend to think outside the box in very mischievous ways and stuff. When, you know, James was like about, you know, two or so, you know, he, as a child he loves fruit. Actually, he still does. But, you know, he just loved fruit and he would eat a lot of fruits. But of course, being in a Chinese family, we were always taught that you must finish whatever you eat. Or if you can, you know, you need to you know, put it in the refrigerator or something. But obviously, James, you know, being only two years old, had trouble finishing his peaches and his pears and apples. So he found an efficient way to get rid of it. He hid him underneath the couch in the bed. Oh. And obviously, we did not discover it until months later. Oh. But like people like Loki and Kyle and stuff like that, all their little mischievous deeds eventually backfires on them. And James learned that little lesson sometime around three. So one night, one night. After, you know, around, after dinner, James being the youngest, you know, he, you know, he didn't quite finish his dinner yet, so all of us, we finished our dinner, so we left. So my mom reminded him to finish his milk. He says, okay, I will. But obviously, you know, since everybody else left already and he was being impatient, James decided to pour the milk down the kitchen sink. And then he went up to my mom and said, mom, I'm done. Uh, but of course, my mom thought, hey, this is kind of strange. So she went into the kitchen, looked at the sink, and found some milk residue. And then he gave James the whooping of his life. And as far as I know, he's never lied to my mom again. <laughs> okay. Now the thing is though, as smart and analytical as James is, for all of you who knows him and stuff like that, the one characteristic about him which trumps his analytical ability is that he is extremely loyal and faithful to his friends and family. In fact, in hindsight, when I think about some of the things that I've done that he'd agreed to, I mean, it makes me wonder, wait, what the hell is he doing? Because, I mean, I put him through some crazy, crazy stuff. Because I remember one time, it was one summer, James must have been about six years old. My friend Peter was about ten, and I was about twelve. We were taking Chinese class at this church at the top of Solano. Well, at that time, my friend Peter had this orange bike with a banana seat. And me being the oldest, I decided, like, well, let's take Peter's bike and ride home after Chinese class. So, you, so right now you're wondering, how do you fit three people on one bike? Well, the solution was very simple. Peter sat in the back, I stood on the pedal, James sat on the handlebar. I mean, God must have been smiling on this or something that obviously we got back with no incident. Now, okay. Also, 
the thing about James is his faith in me, you know, in our family is very unshaken because because of me, he actually got into an argument with his teachers when he was seven years old. For those of you who know me, I'm a notoriously bad speller. But of course, James didn't know that when he was seven. Now, when I was a kid, I used to play a lot of you know, role-playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons, Room Quest, Stormbringer, Champions, and James being my little brother, of course, you know, he plays with me. And so one day, you know, he was having a spelling test and that spelled the word demon. Obviously, I just spelled the word demon. So James argued with the teacher saying, no, that is wrong. That, that's not how you spell demon because that's not how my brother spells it. <laughs> Now, okay, the thing about James is this. I mean, aside from, you know, being you know, a very analytical and loyal person, James is also a very fanatical person. I mean, he basically loves what he loves. He likes what he likes. I mean, that's, unfortunately, that's a tricky inheritance because we tend to be a little wild fanatical that way for what we like. So, it's sort of like this. James was not a very athletic person, so he wasn't really into sports. But after he started working and stuff, he soon discovered basketball. I see after he discovered basketball, he got into all things basketball, except for actually playing the game. But he got involved into, you know, fantasy basketball. So at the height, he was involved in like five or six different leagues at a time, and he would at least place in two or three of them. Now, obviously, since James, you know, I trained James to play like role-playing games and stuff since he was little and stuff. So the natural progression is to play, you know, computer RPG games. And my sister Helen and my brother-in-law introduced James to a role, you know, an RPG game called Maple Story. Big mistake. Big mistake. Because James obviously had that fanatical nature and stuff, and since Maple Story appealed to him. He, you know, he went out of worse than a dog out of bone. Because when Helen first introduced James to Maple Story, she had a character that was like, you know, 30th level already. In no time at all, you know, James in a couple of months already surpassed Helen's character and he continued playing. In fact, James started making extra characters, which are mule characters, just to carry all the extra stuff that his primary character didn't have. Well, now, but that's not enough. James eventually reached the point in which his mule character had to have mule characters. <laughs> now, thankfully, you know, you know, James met Mimi. So because of that, his priorities start changing, and we haven't really heard about Maple Story again. <laughs> now, the other thing about James is that okay, not only is he an analytical, you know, fanatical, loyal person. James is actually also a very caring person and a very devoted person to his family and friends, for those who, of course, notice him. I mean, obviously, like, one day when my sister was on the freeway, she had a flat tire, and James took off work, you know, to change his tires. Like, for my mother, she, my mother has a lot of chronic muscle pains and stuff. So, obviously, you know, me and my brother bought her first, you know, little massage machines. But if you ever came to a house, you would see that we have tons and tons and tons of massage machines. Well, over half, about half of them or so, James bought. Because whenever James is walking around, he'd say, hey, this is a nice new device. Mom doesn't have this, or this is better than the previous device. So he would buy them and bring them home to my mom. Now, for those of you who are children of immigrants, this is something you understand. Being a children of immigrants, obviously there's this cultural and generational gap between us and the elder generation. Because of that, it is always difficult for us to speak on a social level with some of our elders. Now, for those of you who know my dad, the, you also know that my dad, obviously being a chum, is very fanatical about the things that he loved. And one of the things that my dad loved is Chinese chess. I mean, we all knew that growing up and stuff. So after James started working and stuff, you know, he started teaching himself to become, become very good Chinese chess player by playing online. So this way, he and my dad would have something in common so that they, you know, could have something to bond over. That's why, you know, I, I, I know that my brother, James, you know, he, he will be being, a, you know, intelligent, 
fanatical, loyal, and loving, caring person. He he would be a you know a you know wonderful husband and a very loving you know a very loving father. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mimi for marrying my stupid Gong Tao brother. <laughs> and if I haven't had a chance to say this before, I'd like to say this in front of everyone. Mimi, welcome to the family. Thank you, Robert. Now it's like Helen's turn. It's Helen. Oh, all right.